Welcome back to the Crypt Labs YouTube channel. We got Colin the Mace. He's back from his 24-hour adventure. If you're in the UIG, you probably know what's up. Um, you're looking healthy. You're looking, you're looking ready. We're alive. Let's, Let's go. Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> what happens when you go out of range? This is a question we were getting. I know you just did a long, hour-long yeah. live in the UIG, but when you go out of range in a liquidity pool, what is happening? The mechanics, and are you losing money because people seem to freak out when markets are red but they seem and tend to celebrate when markets are green and i think that's a reflection of human beings hey when times are good we don't really ask many questions when times are bad we start asking questions which is where we grow so markets have been choppy unfortunately the market is eating people up they're selling lows they're doing the craziest decisions i'm just like what are you doing and it's why so few people win this game we're very strategic with our approach and I think understanding what is actually happening will help you make less of a emotional decision. So, Colin, what's yes, up? Sir. Yeah, I've got a lot to talk about. I'll try to condense all this because we did. I just went live for over oh, we can talk about over forty five minutes. Yeah, Let's like I, and I was like, minutes. guys, I like we ran out of time. But next, like you know, soon we'll, we'll do this again because um, there was still so many questions. And and this is a great topic, Lucas. This is really really important. Um, and what I said at the beginning of my call today with the UIG is understanding having the education the understanding of what's actually happening underneath the hood is extremely important when making decisions especially when times are like right now oh prices are currently have retracted prices have currently have fallen discounts doesn't yeah discount right and well that's another thing we can we can talk about but but understanding okay i'm in a liquidity pool i'm in a concentrated liquidity pool and i'm at a range on the downside so there's red everywhere well now like you just said now's the question i ask uh, as questions but what we try to do is we try to um, have that prior to entry and having a strategy prior to entry so that if the price goes down to the bottom end of my range what's my strategy what's we my plan, plan for to do it. yep yeah we plan for it yeah exactly um but for those who don't plan for it we just see tend to lean more on the emotional reactivity side and so what i try to do in the community through our education and through our courses and challenges and my live streams is Okay, how can we really understand what's going on behind the scenes so that when the time comes, we're not panicking. We just we understand this is exactly the the action that I'm going to take. Um, and I, I kind of have three things that I talked about today. Lucas, if I can kind of share let's my screen, it. just kind of talk yeah, about let's things do it. here, let's give you kind of a little behind the scenes. Um, yeah, let's let's share the screen. Let's share the screen. There's a, there's a lot I want to uh, cover and show you here. Okay. Um, one thing I do want to show you, Lucas, real quick here in the DeFi uh, earner portfolio challenge, this is a challenge that we bring people through step by step to set this stuff up. But here in quest one, we have a, an entry level criteria, you know, entry criteria. We also have um, exit criteria. And one thing I wanted to talk about before we start talking about mechanics and getting into weeds is that this is a perfect criteria to go through when you're inside of a pool, when you're assessing on a on a daily or weekly basis, the positions that you're in. And one of the questions that we ask are, has anything fundamentally shifted, right? So let's say the current price is now down and out of range. Well, you would have to take a step back and go, okay, well, what's going on in the markets? Okay, everything's red. Okay, so it's not just this one asset that's that's that has tanked, right? Everything is starting to see red. Okay, now I understand that. Is this something that I would still want to hold? Long term, is this asset that I'm in in this liquidity pool? Is this still something that I want? And then the third one is: is do I think that the that the price of where it is right now? Do I think that it will go up back to where I started? Back well, like, well, do I think it'll go back up to my entry uh, starting price? Um, and if the answer is no to any of those, right? The answer is like no. Uh, then I would not recommend staying in it, right? Mm -hmm. I I think that your capital could be better used elsewhere. But it is a really important thing to ask before you start moving. And this is where I think said. people get stuck. Because literally, I just bought more Arrow like a few minutes ago because it's down, oh, I yeah. think, 18%. But see, that that was a pop-up from a message in our community. Arrow is on sale. That lets me know that there's a high-level individual having a look at that, uh, depending on what you believe the price could be. So I think Arrow is on sale, exactly. too. So that's a great example of... Great example. And that's just that's just the wisdom in our in our community that it's like oh my god panic totally. everything's red no no no, no let's no. rethink this let's rethink this let's slow Shopping. down right yeah and so actually it's a great entry point for a lot of liquidity pools too that's not something that we talk yep. about much but now is probably a good entry price to, to yep. get in but anyways um <clears throat> so yeah ask yourself those those questions do i want to hold these still long term is anything fundamentally shifted and do i think that the current price of where it is right now do i think it's going to go up in the future yep. if the answer is no i don't think it's going to go up then I, I like i wouldn't want to be exposed to that yep. like i would just i would just exit and that's why we yep. have this exit criteria here to help walk you through that question and the entry criteria which we don't have to cover i'll link a video right. to it but it's it also covers that too is this something i would hold long term and like it will 
calm your nerves. If you're in stuff that you understand why you're in it, like you understand you, I could, you could show me your portfolio and you could tell me each position you're in and each asset of why you're in it, what your exit is, what your target price is. If you don't know that you're gambling, you're just copying our YouTube yep. or whatever the hell you're doing. You're just, you're gambling. Exactly. Exactly. And Lucas, what I did is I actually just shared my screen and shared an example. Like, Hey, this is a real life example of what I'm in. I put $1,800 worth of neon in USDC at, in this pool three months ago. I've been in this thing for three months at this, at this current price or at this current range. It's been printing me fees for a very long time. You can see You're here. You're probably on house 30, by now then. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. It's yeah. been, it's been great. But now it's like, okay, what do I do? I'm not panicking. But what do I do? Okay. Current price is a dollar and 12 cents. The bottom end of my range is $1.32. Top end is 221. So I asked myself, and I walked through this in my live stream, asked myself these questions. Do I think the current price is going to be greater than $1.12 in the future? The answer for me is yes. Not financial advice. Go do your own research. But for me, yeah, I, I do think it is. And I like neon. I like the, what they're trying to do, right? Then the next question is, okay, well, what do I do? Do I do I wait? We have a 48 hour rule in the community mm -hmm. here of, okay, well, we should probably just wait. Because when the price goes out of range, what we have seen is that the vast majority of times, um, when you're out of range, 24 to 48 hours, the price generally comes back up into your range. And so why we talk about that 48 hour rule is that we don't want to um, too hastily make decisions. We don't too, we don't want to change the, the figures and the underlying pool positions uh, too soon. And so that 48 hour rule just slows us down. Okay, not going to be emotional here. I'm going to wait 24, 48 hours to see what happens with the price. For me, it's been 48 hours, Lucas. And so now I'm seeing, okay, the current price is down to $1.12. I don't think it's going to come back up into $1.32 within the next 24 hours. And so the next question is, do I exit the pool completely or do I stay in this pool? I'm making the decision I want to stay in this pool. Okay, well, what do I do? Do I traditionally rebalance or do we do what we call a snuggle rebalance? And shout out to Chad in the community. I love it. And it's such a great alternative to a traditional mm -hmm. rebalance. Now, Lucas, we can, again, like this could be a two hour long thing. So I'll try to mm -hmm. be short. But a traditional rebalance is when we take the asset that is 100%. So in this example, this is kind of a good one right here. I could take some of my neon, I could sell it or swap it for USDC to then get back into range and reset the range. But when I do that, I lock in the impermanent loss because now I'm taking that neon that's worth a dollar and 12 cents. I'm selling it. I'm locking in, locking in that loss to sell it for USDC to get back into a pool traditionally, right? And so is that a bad thing? Not a bad thing, but we want to avoid that as much as we can. We want to avoid traditionally rebalancing and avoid locking in the impermanent loss, right? Locking in, selling at a lower price point than what we originally started with, which for me, I think was like a dollar and sixty cents, right? Just mm -hmm. for reference. <clears throat> and so I don't want to sell neon for a dollar and twelve cents to get back in range to start earning fees again, mm -hmm. but I do, I do want to get back in fee, get back in range, right, Lucas? Because I want to earn fees. That's why I'm in this 1 pool. One percent a day is pretty good. Exactly. So. What we do is it's called a snuggle rebalance. Again, this could be an hour, but what we're doing is I, I'm extending my range. I'm exiting the pool, but I'm re-entering the pool with the bottom bottom end of my range, the bottom boundary of my range being directly snuggled up against that current price. So in this example, the bottom end of my range would be a dollar and and thirteen cents. Mm -hmm. And actually, look, this was really cool during the live stream. It was a dollar and ten cents, mm -hmm. and so I use the example of it being at a nice. dollar and eleven cents. And why I'm so excited to talk about that because. I would be back in range right now at a dollar and twelve cents, right? And so I would be earning neon and USDC at a thirty-five percent clip mm -hmm. per month because I'm back in earning range. So that's mm -hmm. the difference between like a traditional uh, rebalance and a snuggle rebalance is that I'm 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 helping it get back into range more by sliding the the current price down. And then again, I, I went on a big long thing about how that changes the figures in the pool a little bit. But the last thing I will say, Lucas, because I think it'll be really valuable for the YouTube mm -hmm. community as well, is that. The next question is, do I keep the top end of my range at 221 mm -hmm. or do I slide it with it? Pros and cons here, Lucas, and I'll just kind of rapid fire them out. Pros to that, if I do slide that top that, the top boundary down, I will maintain, generally speaking, roughly, I will, I will maintain the fee percentage that I was I've currently I, I used to have, right? And so well, let me say it in a different, a different way. If I just extend that one range, it widens the range, right? And the wider the range, the less concentrated it is, meaning less fees collected. So this might be, you know, 30% or 28%. Woe is me, right? But that's what would happen if I just extended one side. And so the the pro, right, the, the positive thing is that if you move that top range down with it, 
you will earn more fees. Mm -hmm. The downside of that is that if neon in this example does move back to the upside, uh, doesn't need to be quickly, but at any point, if it starts moving back to the upside, that odd would start to convert the neon tokens for USDC at an earlier price point mm -hmm. than if I had maintained the original the integrity of that original range, right? Mm -hmm. So again, pros and cons for everything. Uh, for me, I haven't decided. Original. I usually I do too. The I normally do. And then I snuggle it back up as it goes up so I can get back into the juicy. Yep. I like that earnings. a lot. Yeah. yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. And you ask 10 other people, they're going to have 10 slightly totally. different variations of their strategy, which I think is what makes the space so exciting. And I think this is the point for anyone yeah. watching this. Like we just literally covered probably 10 or 12 different little mini strategies within an overall framework. It's like, don't be doing this stuff blind, make a thesis, Make your own frameworks. If you don't want to be part of the UIG or learn from us, that's fine too. Make your own frameworks. But we've spent probably hundreds of hours and probably hundreds of thousands of dollars of mistakes creating our own frameworks and they're tested. Thousands of members have tested them and it works. And so now at any given time, you can pull out a card being like, oh, this is the situation I'm facing. Here's the card. Okay, here's how I'm going to play it. Oh, here's how I'm going to play it. And you do that over an extended period of time, you win. Most people, they have... They do have no plan. It actually blows my mind. I, I met people who have like 25K in their portfolio of DeFi. And I start asking them very basic questions. And they don't know it because they've been copying off YouTube and other YouTubers, whatever. And I'm like, that is dangerous. You're going to get wiped out. It's going to hurt. Yeah, and that's why I stress the education. And I know for some people, it, some know. people love it. And other people don't like it as much. The people who the love education, it well, dude. They do. And that's what I just was going to say is that the education is the foundation for making yeah. these decisions. And so yeah. people want to make money, but this is a hard, I, I mean, it's challenging. This is a yeah. hard skill to master. You master it though. And you start to position yourself as someone that can still make money when markets are ready or not even just make money, but make decisions that can set themselves up and position yourself to make money yeah. at any, at any point. So anyways, Lucas, yeah, that's why I stress with it so much education, learn the stuff, stick through it uh, because the people who do, who do master it and come out on the other side, they're so comfortable and relaxed that people like uh, Justin earlier was just like, Hey, it's on sale, you know, because the underlying stuff is, is understood. So anyways, we can go, go on for hours, but that's the essence. Let's go. I'm going to leave some, I'm going to leave some videos on the four corners of the screen. If you, if y'all want to dive deeper into it, if you're watching this, you're like, I really want to dive deeper into some of this stuff. This is really interesting to me. I'll find four videos that are uh, that that add to this conversation. Highly recommend you check them out and spend an hour or two on this YouTube channel. Go through some videos. Go, I I dare you go through ten videos today, and take notes, study it. And after an hour, you're gonna have a couple pages of notes. And I I can't see a universe or a reality where you don't get a couple hundred, couple thousand, or maybe tens of thousands of dollars of value from studying it. Don't just watch YouTube videos, study it, take notes. Uh, it will serve you. Even if you get one thing, it'll be worth your time. It'll be worth your hours. So study it up. And uh, with that said, we'll see you in the next video.